Anyway, today we're going to talk about a movie called Milk, about the story of uh, somebody, oddly enough, called Harvey Milk. He came from New York. He had worked for years for, I think, Metropolitan Life, and he came west in the early 70s, as many people did, to get away from getting beat up by cops, and they come to San Francisco, and they're also getting beat up by cops. And his whole view was that you had to be proud of who you were. And so we had a campaign for gay rights, and uh, he recruited people, he was very good about it, and they had marches and stuff. He then ran incredibly to be a, a city uh, councilman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Councilman. The first time he lost, he ran again and won. Three, I think three times. Three times. Yeah. Anyway, he actually won. During this time, there was a guy called Dan White, a former policeman, in fact, was elected. Yes, they were called supervisors. Supervisors, supervisors thank yeah. you. I knew the word wasn't right. Dan was a very unstable guy. He murdered. He shot the mayor of San Francisco, yeah, Moscone. Yeah. A very fine person, liberal man who, who had supported human rights, being gay rights or whatever. Uh, he murdered them both in cold blood, went to their offices, shot them both in the city hall. And another startling twist, he was not convicted of murder. And he was convicted of manslaughter, only with a famous defense that he'd eaten too much fast food, which had un undone his mental balance. And so he yes. was um, not responsible for his action. Gus Van Zandt, who is an extremely good director, Sean Penn, you will be hearing of the Academy Award performance, the most extraordinary performance I've ever seen Sean Penn give. I was convinced he was Harvey Milk. I was too. You know, and I was devastated because you know from the beginning, there are no spoilers here, you know that no, they, he The died. movie starts yes. with uh, Diane Feinstein yes. announcing to the press but that these pe two, two people have been murdered. And then there is his first boyfriend, his James Franco, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Emil Hirsch is also a gay activist. And Dan White is played by Josh Brolin. Brilliant. The, the movie is one of the most exciting films to see. This script chooses the way of show you what's going to happen, and then you, in, the suspense is how is it going to happen and where. And that it makes it a very suspenseful story. It's fun to watch. It is a story of a guy who fights for his rights. And he was full of joy, I gather, Harvey Milk. He was a very cheerful, sweet guy, energetic, loved people. People liked him. He ran this little camera store. I want to make a couple of, I'm going to rain a tiny bit on this parade. Okay. It is a bit of a hagiography. In other words, it absolutely makes a saint out of Harvey Milk. Yeah. It reminded me away of uh, Gandhi a few <laughs> years ago, which was another very bad movie I thought that won the Academy Award. Yeah, but this is not a bad movie. No, it's not, but I'm just saying <clears throat> that this thing, there was not a thing wrong with Gandhi. I mean, the, in the movie, it was just too much. And, but it won the Academy Award, and if I remember incredibly, the costume designer also won the Oscar for putting for, people in sheets, <laughs> for putting 30,000 people from Mumbai in sheets. But anyway, the movie is totally adoring of him throughout. He does not have one foible. Also, they're very conscious of the ick factor, as we call it, which makes people very worried about yeah. uncomfortable with homosexuals because of, of their physical, what they do. So there's absolutely no lovemaking in the movie, despite the fact... Oh, no, there's kissing. No, there's kissing, please, of a, of a particularly, I found, disquieting type, I might say. Well, I mean, Harvey meets this boyfriend on the steps of this New York oh, subway. But, but, okay. But just, and says hello, and in 45 is, seconds, they're giving deep kisses to each other on the subway and stairs going home in New together. York. But then when they go home together, characteristically, the cut is to them having a birthday cake in bed <laughs> instead of what they did before they ate the birthday cake. And I, so they I don't mind not seeing people doing no, it you, on the screen. I know, but... Gay said, or straight. I agree with you, but I'm saying in a heterosexual picture, yeah. they always simulate, yes. you know, they were hot scenes of lovemaking. Yeah, yeah. They knew that would really drive the audience away. And they really don't. I mean, they do not show it. What is fascinating, they were together for a long time, and his, they split up for the most heterosexual reasons. You're always working. You're never home in time for dinner, which, you know, is That's fine. Right. That's what it's about. Relationships are not about what you do in bed. It's what you do in the rest of the time, right? But the general public does not think that. So I'm just saying. I mean, whether it's, I, I agree with you, but I'm saying that, that actually, and so they make a big point of trying to do that, just as you said, to make, they're just 
ordinary people, except yeah. that they do different things. <laughs> Which is none of our business. Anyway. Well, I know, but it's, if you put it you on know, the screen. There used to be a laws, Lorenzo, that if you had sex that was not the, what they call the missionary position, you could be arrested for it. That's right. against the law, right? Yeah, absolutely right. There were sodomy laws. My other point was that, curiously, Dan White, you never see him eating one bit of fast food. <laughs> I mean, not even a cupcake, it like Marsha called, makes so wonderfully. <laughs> called the Twinkie defense, you know, right? They, they said that eating too much fast food had caused a chemical imbalance in his brain and didn't know what he was doing. But the point is, in the entire movie, we, we yeah. see a lot of Dan White. He never eats one bit of fast food. That's true. I think that they were afraid that might give a little credence to the, <laughs> to the defense. The other piece of information that I didn't know until I looked it up was that he'd been a Vietnam vet. I knew you'd get Vietnam into this somehow. You always do. <laughs> I really think whatever your feeling on this subject is, you'll love the movie. It actually is an excellent movie. This is a movie. It's a suspenseful movie, dramatic movie. and A cheerful movie. It, well, actually, it, it is a cheerful movie. You know what? It's an empowering movie. There was a documentary done a number of years ago that's quite famous. I think it's called The Lives of Harvey Milk. And they took some of that footage. And you watch how in 30 years ago that if you were gay and you were in a bar, the cops could come in and harass you and beat you up. You are thrilled to see that you can make a difference change. And this picture empowers people to feel that you can make changes, whether it's in your own life or in your political life or whatever. Yeah, and that's why I like it so much. Yeah, I like it being slightly less ideological. Yes. I like it because it's a classic worm turns movie and the underdog wins. Oh, very good. You know, it is always dramatically satisfying to see the underdog winning. win. And this is a movie that I really think everybody will enjoy. I agree for a change.